Okay, so hello once again. Today we're talking about summer programs in the US. My name is Yelena Mikhailova. I'm an Education USA advisor for Belarus. And uh, I'm very glad to have today the co-presenter, the representative of the College of the Kenyans, Tim Honadel. Uh, Tim, you can also briefly introduce yourself. Great, thank you very much, Elena. I'm uh, very pleased to be here. I know that the times are not easy for a lot of people in parts of the world, but College of the Canyons is all about education. And uh, we believe education needs to continue no matter what's going on. Uh, I'm the director of the international program. So the people who work for me, they actually look at your application, but there's some pretty good news about that, uh, which we'll talk about it at the end of my portion of the presentation. And I'm looking forward to uh, helping you answer all of your questions so you can achieve your academic dreams. Thank you, Tim. Uh, so today I'll be talking briefly about some basics for those who are interested in summer programs, in searching for summer programs or applying for summer programs. So what, uh, how to search for them, how to apply, what things you need to prepare. Then Tim will present the perspective of, uh, from, from the perspective of the College of the Kenyans, will uh, share some final details, some things uh, from the perspective of the admissions committee, and you can ask him questions. I would encourage you to ask him questions as he is representing the US institution and uh, about summer programs, but also about any other uh, programs or admission related uh, things that you are interested in. So use this opportunity. We will start from the basics. So there are different types of uh, programs. And uh, mostly today we're talking about short-term studies, about short-term programs. And um, uh, for mostly for those who are applying to undergraduate uh, degrees in the US. So uh, you can use this terminology, you can use this uh, examples as on the slide, just to know how to look, how to search for different programs for your summer plans. Uh, so for example, you can search for pre-college summer programs, just making sure that they are, uh, they are available for international students. You can also, if you are interested in uh, practicing your English, mastering your English language skills, you can search for English language programs or English as a second language programs, ESL programs. So those can be divided into intensive English programs and American language and culture programs. Uh, so intensive English programs, they mostly focus on uh, mastering your English language skills. They have very intensive programs on grammar, speaking, reading, and all other uh, parts of English learning. And the American language and culture programs, uh, they uh, also let you know more about American uh, culture, as it says in the uh, name, but also the uh, co college com campus culture and studying in American universities. Programs can give you credit for your future studies or uh, not give you any credit. So it can be just for your interest or if you want to learn a specific uh, subject or some aspects of mathematics or biology, then you can uh, find this kind of, of programs that are very uh, focused on a specific subject area. And then there are some summer camps or schools for teenagers. Um, so this are just examples of different types of programs that you can search for. Uh, and you can, uh, you will see throughout our, my presentation some um, examples or screenshots or examples of different projects uh, programs you can find online. I would like to let you know that Education USA doesn't promote any specific institutions. We promote education in the US in general, and we want to encourage you to look broadly at your options, your study options, whether you're considering Ivy League schools or community colleges or public universities or private universities, just know that there are different options available for you. And uh, in terms of different programs, also, you'll just see certain examples. Like on this slide, you can see Promise uh, program that is also recommended by MIT as one of the summer programs that you can use. Uh, you can apply to if you want to prepare for studies at MIT. Uh, and uh, you can see that there are different even uh, parts uh, 
parts of this program that uh, you can be eligible for, like as a student or as a teacher, those are different uh, curriculum and um, you can apply for them. Uh, on the left, you can see some uh, PEN programs, uh, UPEN programs, uh, some specific on campus uh, from Wharton Global Youth on, Com on Campus programs also by uh, Penn University, and also ELP or English language uh, summer programs that you see uh, in the bottom. And those are just uh, for you to understand that there can be they can be on different topics from leadership to mathematics uh, to just English language or global leadership and all other things. So there are several reasons why you can apply, why you should apply to summer programs if you find uh, such opportunities. So first of all, you can get experience in the field of your interest. If you want to be uh, majoring in biology or chemistry, then uh, get into a summer school uh, with the focus on chemistry will be a great, uh, great opportunity for you to work in the lab, to try some uh, and do some research, to learn different topics or aspects of this subject. So definitely if you want to just be more experienced in, the, in, a, in a specific area, then you can apply for summer programs. Uh, also summer programs in the US, especially for international students, they allow you to understand the US culture and the campus life. Uh, so you can try what it, uh, and uh, study as an American student. You can understand what it means to be a student at the American University and uh, figure out if such uh, education is for you in general. Uh, also, if you are interested in applying further to a specific degree, for example, undergraduate, there are some graduate degrees that also have some summer programs that you can choose before the academic year starts. So uh, if you, for example, go to a specific uh, program at, for example, Yale, and uh, you spend a summer there, then maybe a year after that, you would like to apply to Yale University. So you will already demonstrate to them that you were interested in studying with them and uh, you applied to one of the initiatives, one of the opportunities that they had to offer. So it definitely will be a strong point for your application if you uh, want to be selected to a specific university or college to go to a specific university or uh, summer school that is um, offered by that college or university. Though if we look broadly, any opportunity is great. So uh, whenever you find an interesting option, then you should consider it if it fits with your motivation, with your academic interest, with your uh, other interests that will give you those benefits and points to your CV and resume. Uh, so it means also that enriching your portfolio by these uh, additional opportunities is also a great plus of summer programs. Many summer programs are very selective. They are very competitive. Uh, they might be uh, accepting only like 4% or 5% of applicants, uh, like most competitive universities in the US. So if you are selected to such summer program, then uh, you can also add it to your honors. You can also uh, be proud of being uh, selected, of being uh, admitted to such a selective opportunity. So it's also a bonus point for you. Another thing, you can get connections. Usually summer schools, they have a lot of students from the US, from uh, those who are accepting international students that are from all over the world. So you can get, uh, find new friends, like do these basic things, but also you can get connections with somebody at the university or college where the summer program will be held, maybe some professionals in the area. So in the future, they can give you recommendations or you can uh, like use those connections to uh, get connected to somebody else. And of course, practicing your English is also a big plus of uh, being immersed, right? Living in the English speaking environment and uh, you can do it during summer. On the example, you can see the Girls Who Code uh, summer program uh, opportunity. So it is one of many that you can find online. And for uh, in their case, um, in-person programs are already uh, closed, but you can apply for online and you can do self-based courses and they are free and they're open to international 
students. Things that you need to consider. First of all, you need to consider eligibility criteria. So uh, after you do re your research, if you are, for example, a high school student and you are 15 years old, so make sure that you che check eligibility criteria so that you can be sure that you can apply uh, based on your age, uh, on your country. Some programs will be accepting international students, but they will have certain restrictions that only students from specific countries can apply. Uh, but also, uh, if you find some information online, make sure that those options, summer schools or summer institutes or programs, that they are available for international students, because a lot of great opportunities with good funding or which are recommended by universities, they are only available to US citizens. So make sure that you check with the international office that they are accepting international applicants as well. Then you should check the dates uh, and dates, deadlines uh, and dates when the program is happening and uh, um, so that you do not miss this opportunity and duration of the program. It can be several days, it can be two weeks, four weeks, eight weeks or more. So if you are applying to a program that is two months long, for example, usually these programs will have a very early deadline, but also you need to make sure that you will be able to go on this program if it is in person and uh, actually participate. Then check acceptance rates, because, because as I said, some programs might be more competitive than others. Uh, some uh, programs are open to all, while others, they have a very complicated application and you need to apply really, really in advance because they're very competitive. Uh, program costs. Uh, a lot of summer programs uh, are uh, cost you certain fees and you need to make sure that you understand the costs completely because you may see that the program costs $2,000 uh, for tuition uh, and uh, it may not seem like a lot but you also need to uh, plan for tickets for other like medical insurance other costs uh, living expenses and all other things so make sure that uh, you uh, read uh, carefully what, are the, what, what the costs of the program are. Some programs provide scholarships and financial aid. It will be also mentioned on their uh, websites, or you can get in touch with the International Student Admission Office or uh, program uh, contact person. So make sure if this aid is available. Uh, then you need also to check the focus or academic major or area of concentration. So some programs will be very, very specific like mathematics or uh, biology or uh, entrepreneurship. So if you are not interested in this area of uh, study, then uh, most probably this program is not right for you, even if it is completely free. Don't apply to programs that do not, um, they're very, very specific in terms of their studies but they do not match your interest. Uh, continuing with that, personal fit. So in most of the programs, especially competitive uh, programs that give uh, good funding and scholarship, they will be asking you to write uh, different essays and uh, demonstrate your motivation. So make sure that you uh, read through the program values, program uh, curriculum, you find uh, why, uh, you find the answer to the question why they need to accept you to their program. Why do you think that you are a good fit to this program? Like with the university, you need to make sure that you can articulate why uh, you are a good fit. Then uh, you need to check what the format of the program is. Currently, there are a lot of options available online after pandemic, which is a good option for international students. If you can't travel, if you can't go uh, to uh, visit the campus or be uh, during certain dates in the US, for example, then some programs will be hybrid and then some will be in person. And also uh, check, especially with bigger programs, what is uh, the recognition or accreditation, if it is applicable, if it is uh, some for the program that gives credit, like if, if it is supported by the university. So just don't give your money uh, to the program that uh, has like no credits, this has no connections to universities or uh, other visible signs of the fact that it will actually give you good knowledge. 
You can see an example of the University of Notre Dame summer programs, a sample day of life a student. So a lot of summer programs, they are work in the basis of summer camps. Uh, so it's really a fun time, not just studying, but also a good time uh, that you can spend with new friends. Application process, check the deadlines. Some uh, programs may have deadlines that are in January, February, March. So unfortunately for this summer, a lot of opportunities are already closed because a lot of programs are very, very, very selective. But there are other programs that are still open that do not cost a lot or have certain financial aid or are free to applicants. So make sure that you read through the deadlines and they can be a week before the program start three weeks, but usually there's some time in March or April for very competitive programs. Then you need to complete your application form with your contact details. Uh, there will be certain language requirements like TOEFL score or Duolingo score that you need to demonstrate, especially if you are applying to a very subject specific uh, program like mathematics or uh, journalism, for example. Uh, if you're accepted to that uh, program, then uh, curators like teachers, they need to know that you will understand uh, what uh, the program will be about. You will be able to participate and to study. Uh, if you are applying to English language programs, then usually those requirements are much lower because the, the goal of such program is to boost your English language skills. So you don't have to be that experienced in English. Then in most applications, you will need to write essays. There will be certain recommendations that your teacher or somebody who is not your relative will have to write. Uh, then uh, also if the, those programs have some academic focus, then you need to sometimes to demonstrate that you have already learned certain aspects like in mathematics, for example, that you have already passed certain uh, topics so that you can participate fully. Some programs will have interviews, uh, some will uh, have uh, certain financial forms that you need to complete if you want to receive financial aid. And then certain, uh, as with universities, certain application fees uh, that you pay uh, that are non-refundable. So if the program doesn't provide any financial aid or is not free, sometimes you have to uh, pay certain fees in advance so that your application is considered. And also you should not uh, forget about pre-departure uh, preparations, tickets, about visa, and you need to take into consideration if you're able to go during selected dates, if you're able to receive visa before the selected dates. So uh, take this uh, into account. And once again, an example from Promise, one of the uh, mathematics focused summer schools. And you see here costs, you see that they provide financial aid and how, uh, what are the uh, prerequisites for uh, those who want to receive financial aid. So uh, check in advance if you are now, uh, if, if you think that you are too late already for summer programs in 2022, you can also start making a list for possible opportunities for summer 2023 with those selected uh, selective programs like Promise or Yale Global Leaders or other summer schools. And the last part, uh, last slide in this part would be where to search for opportunities. So of course, Google, uh, use different keywords to search for opportunities because they also change. Uh, one year the program is available, another year it may not be available or some opportunities open for international students that were not open in the past. So you need to always update and uh, provide, uh, like and, and do this research. Uh, after you Google, uh, then you need to go to university websites. If you already have in mind certain colleges that you want to apply to, then it makes it so much easier because you can go to this college's website and see what kind of short-term programs or summer programs they have or online programs they have. Online programs is a great opportunity as well because even if you do not go on campus, of course, you would like to go maybe to America and spend there some summer and uh, also learn something good uh, and something that will be beneficial for your future academics. But if you can't go physically, then 
doing something online, even such things as participating in webinars or getting in touch with college representatives already uh, starts your communication connection to a specific college. So uh, we encourage you to do that in advance because it may also benefit your future uh, application uh, results. There is also some resources available at educationusa.state.gov and through Education USA centers in your country. So make sure that you check their social media, our social media, and to see what opportunities are um, available. And a US embassy websites will have inform information about different exchange programs or summer programs that you can apply to. Like for example, we uh, had an application for to Benjamin Franklin scholarship for high school students and the application deadlines were in March. So for graduate studies, for different short-term studies, uh, US embassy websites are a great resource uh, to uh, take a look if you want to find something for your summer or for the short term. On this note, I would like to pass uh, the mic, the virtual mic uh, to Tim, uh, so that uh, Tim, if you have anything to add, because I only gave this general overview uh, of uh, how things work. So make sure, feel free to add and feel free to share uh, information from your perspective. Good, good. Yes, thank you very much, Elena. That was very comprehensive coverage of everything that's available through the normal processes for summer programs. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about what community college does because we've identified that not everyone gets accepted to their summer program of, of choice and not everybody gets accepted to the university of choice. And so we realized uh, many years ago that lots of students are excellent students. They just didn't make the cut or maybe they're a little bit uninspired student because they don't know really what they wanna study yet. Maybe high school isn't the best academic place for them. And so the community college system is designed for that. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what that means. So let's go to the next slide. So at College of the Canyons, what we discovered is there's lots of great programs out there. You just heard about MIT, uh, Berkeley has programs, UCLA has programs, Stanford, Harvard, all the Ivy League, Yale, they all have programs. So what we decided is we want to set up something for the students that don't get into those programs. They tried, they applied, they didn't get in for whatever reason. We don't care what the reason is. And so we take a group of students and we create a cohort. And those cohorts come to the College of the Canyons. They live with American families. They experience the Southern California culture, everything from the beaches to the mountains and you know Disneyland, Universal Studios, all that. And they take uh, university lectures, just portions of them. And, and they practice their university level English. And may, you know, you learn the campus, you learn the area of Santa Cruz, and you make local friends. And I'll, it's kind of important to take a look at where you might be going to school in the future and kind of experience it on your own. So let's go to the next slide. So many, many schools have English training, and that's important because, of course, you need to be able to speak English well for two reasons. One is if you are going to study in the United States or Australia or any English speaking country, you're gonna to need to speak English. The second reason though, is that the world has kind of evolved for better or for worse into a world where English is the common language. And so if a Belarusian and a Lithuanian and a Costa Rican and a Chinese get together to talk about business, almost always, it's gonna be in English, probably not in Belarus, probably not in Spanish, probably not in Chinese. And that English language makes you very valuable to employers because that comprehensive um, ability to provide services to your employer is important. And that English language provides that. Let's go to the next slide. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about cost and the cost that I'm talking about is pretty common throughout the community college system in the United States. And yes, I'm at College of the Canyons, I'm in Southern California, but there is hundreds of community colleges across the United States, Washington, Oregon, Texas, Illinois, Florida, uh, Northern California. There's 
there's community colleges everywhere and they have this specific mission which they most of them share in common. And you can do a little bit of research to find out if that community college is a community college for international students, but 50% of them are. And so what you're gonna find is the cost is pretty similar and the cost is generally customized. And so let's say uh, you have a high, your high school decides they wanna put together a group of 15 students to come to College of the Canyons and do a six week immersion program during the summer. And that immersion program is gonna be all about English. It's gonna give you, in, you'll, you'll be in lecture sometimes with American students that are taking classes. You'll be seeing the regional area. You'll learn where the city is and where to live and, and all of those things. And generally the cost is about $100 per day. We say per day because it depends on how long the program is. Community colleges all over the United States have different length programs and all customize the program based on the needs and desires. But many times groups of say 20 students from your high school, they might go to maybe 10 universities around the United States and spend one week at each university. And so there's lots of different ways to do it. You can stay for a long time in one place or you can travel to other schools. Basically, what the schools like to do is they like to make sure that you understand how their system works, who they are, what kind of community you're gonna be living in. And I have to say that the, a university degree in the United States is four years. And the first two years are pretty much the same from an academic standpoint at every school in the country. Doesn't matter whether it's uh, uh, Yale or Harvard or College of the Canyons, uh, your general education psychology 101 class is gonna be pretty much the same. The differences between things are going to be the campus, the community you live in, and of course you meet different people at different schools and make different friends. All right, let's go to the next slide. So if you are a high school graduate already, which may not be who you are now, but you'll get there, you can take summer classes, which count towards university degrees through the California 2 plus 2 program. Now, the California 2 plus 2 program is a mechanism for students who didn't get into their first choice school, say Stanford or UCLA or Belarus, or I mean, or Berkeley, you didn't get in. So what do you do? You didn't get into that school you wanted to get into. And that's because as a freshman from Europe, it's really hard to get into a prestigious US school. They don't know who you are. You have no evidence that you can navigate the American university system well. Um, scores like SAT are becoming less and less common as methods of, of screening and demonstrating your academic bona fides. Um, of course, being able to speak English is really important, but you uh, there's lots of different levels of English when you enter into university. So the California system, and by the way, the system is in Texas, Florida, Wyoming, Illinois, Washington, Oregon, it's all over the United States. This system allows international students to enter into the community college system, prove themselves, and then transfer to that university that they've always dreamed of. And the acceptance rate goes through the roof. So if you're trying to get into Berkeley, for example, which is a very prestigious school, you got less than 10% chance of getting in as a freshman. Now, if you are a brilliant student, you're, you're probably gonna get in. But let's say you're more like me. You're a generally above average student, but not necessarily brilliant. You're not getting in as a freshman. So you come to a community college, College of the Canyons is a perfect example of a school that has a great program for this. And for two years, you take classes and then Berkeley reevaluates. And based on your grades at the community college, your demonstration of the development of leadership skills and the letters of recommendation from your professors you get in, so you go from 10% acceptance rate to 80% acceptance rate. So that is a fantastic improvement. Now, didn't get to stay at one school for four years. 
you did two years at one school and then two years at another. And that's why they call it two plus two. So you only did two years at UCLA or two years at Berkeley instead of all four years. But the degree is issued by Berkeley or UCLA or whatever school you go to. So the degree is exactly the same. Now, let's say you're not a high school graduate. You can take courses for full credit um, from your country. Almost always they're online courses, although there are hybrid courses, which are Zoom, like what we're doing, plus online combined. And as long as you stay outside of the United States as a high school student, you can take these courses. These courses then are included in your two plus two transfer, which means they count as full courses at UCLA or Berkeley or Harvard or wherever you wanna go, as long as you complete the two plus two program. So it's a great opportunity for students in high school to be able to get some institutions that will, uh, that will accept your classes. You transfer the grade and the units all the way over to the, to the four-year school, and then you get your diploma. And we can talk a lot more details about that. Let's take a look at the next slide. So College of the Canyons is located over by this little arrow by California in the bottom left. But I want to point out once again, we are not the only choice. There's over 100, in, uh, 100 campuses in California alone that are community colleges. And if you look at the map, you can see that Oregon above California and Washington, as I've said. And if you come over to the kind of to the middle, there's a, a, a city, uh, Wisconsin and Illinois. And then you can see New York and Pennsylvania, and you go down to Florida, and Texas, and Arizona, they all have the same programs. You have so many choices that all you really have to decide is you want a university degree from the United States and pick where you wanna live. What weather do you like or don't like? Some people like winter, so they like snow. So you wanna be in the Northern part of the United States. Some people love uh, cold rainforests. So you want to be in the northwest part of the United States. Some people want to be in a place like New York City, where there's just people everywhere. Some people want to be in Southern California, where you've got beaches and mountains and the Southern California weather. So it all depends on where you live. The opportunities are wide open for you. And in California, it's a guaranteed transfer program. If you started a community college, and as long as you pass my classes, you are going to be transferred successfully to a California State University, and you're going to get your bachelor's degree. Now, the California State University system is the go-to-work program. So it is specifically designed that if you go through California State University, you get job offers. Now that is for domestic students, you're guaranteed a job offer, it works out great. International students, it always works out pretty well, but students usually continue on for a master's degree. And that's a great way to get fantastic uh, bachelor's degree and master's degree credentials for your global job search after you finish. All right, let's go to the next one. So uh, this is really more about Southern California. There's about uh, 20 uh, community colleges to choose from. College of the Canyons is close to all of these fun things to do. Um, so everything isn't always studying. When you come for a summer program, you're going to be put into something which is partial English, partial academic exposure, and then you're gonna see what the regional area of Southern California is like by going to the beaches and to the mountains and to the amusement parks and the museums. And it's a fantastic place to live. And so I think you'll find that you like it. Let's go to the next slide. So we talked a little bit about that two plus two system. I wanna review one more thing, and that's that all the universities in the USA participate. So if you're looking at Stanford or MIT, you can transfer to those schools through the two plus two program. You port all of your classes and, and all of your grades over to that school. They accept them in whole, and then you continue for two more years and you complete your degree. One of the big parts about two plus two, which is appealing, is the cost. 
So the cost that I have written here is for a California State University degree. It includes food, it includes housing, books, insurance, tuition, everything. Generally, this is your cost. And it is one of the least expensive ways to get a bachelor's degree in the United States. Now, of course, if you go to a very prestigious school like Berkeley or UCLA or MIT, even with scholarships, you pretty much can double this price for year three and year four. And so it does cost more to go to those schools. So the schools I'm talking about here are the 23 California state universities located throughout the state of California that have every major you can imagine. So if you come for a summer program and you take some preparation classes, part of that is gonna to be to go to the campus of the local California State University. And whichever community college you do this with, there's a California State University nearby. And so you're gonna be able to find an opportunity to take a look at that campus and really start envisioning in your own mind what your life would be like if you decided to do a two plus two program. And if you are in your home country and you're still in high school, you can of course take some courses which then apply to this system. And so it's full credit and uh, they're all, and I think it's a great opportunity to kind of learn how to take a university class in the United States when you're in high school. All right, let's hop over to the next slide. And so I'm gonna turn this over to Elena. I'm of course here for any questions about what I talked about, but I just wanted to make sure that I pointed out that when you, there are an alternative system for summer programs specifically designed for students who didn't get into the program of their choice because a lot of the summer programs are very, very competitive. And so instead we create a cohort of students and we run you through a fantastic academic and regional cultural experience. Thank you. Thank you, Tim, very much. It was really interesting to hear from your perspective from something, some maybe less known opportunities for international students. So I would like you to encourage us. We go through our last part that will be very, very brief. I'll just show you some example of summer opportunities, some programs that are free and they have, and the ones that are not free, they have certain costs, but still uh, possible for international students to do. Just please type in chat your questions about uh, summer programs, about any application related things, uh, so that we do not wait after the end of my uh, part. So just start typing now. One thing I would like to share with you is the opportunity to Education USA Academy Connects. Uh, so as you can see, this is a fully online pre-college academic enrichment program. And in the past years, Education USA Academy has happened in, or on campus in the US. After pandemic, uh, they were transformed and they were made more accessible to students. So it is a paid opportunity they have a certain fees from $300 to $500 per course, but uh, they are built together by Education USA advisors and specific colleges that uh, allow you to first understand more about the application process to the US institutions, but also uh, to learn something that is specific to a certain subject. For example, you see here certain links, they will be in the info box under the video recording. Uh, for example, in San Cloud State University, you can apply and you keep the focus topic of the personal statement writing. Uh, in Temple University, the topic will be uh, presented with confidence or ins and outs. But for example, in University of Wisconsin Medicine, it will be STEM, so very technical specific uh, program. Uh, these are just examples of uh, the programs that are still accepting applications or have um, that you can follow through. So make sure that you check this and other uh, Education USA Academy Connects opportunities, and I will post the link to Education uh, USA Academy Connects in the info box. Then other things. So here is just a very, very short list. If you go, you see on the right, uh, the vision and mission and the application process to uh, the program that I personally know students who went on the summer programs who were selected as finalists. Finalists is uh, Yale Young Global Leaders uh, program. 
Uh, and uh, this is a scholarship program. This is very competitive, but it, uh, we had students from Belarus selected in the past to go there physically and online. So uh, this is one of the opportunities. Uh, MIT summer programs offers uh, not only summer programs, but also a list of interesting accredited uh, great opportunities, specifically in sciences and math that you can take uh, if you want to apply to MIT or technical specialty. Then you see a Wharton Global Youth Program from Penn State, Penn Summer Global Institute, Summer Scholars, University of Notre Dame, uh, Cornell has programs, the Ross Mathematics Program uh, that is uh, offered by two colleges, uh, Promise Mathematics Summer Program by Boston University, Mathily, that is still accepting applications until April 26, uh, while most of other programs, they are already not accepting uh, applications, but uh, Mathly is still accepting applications. Uh, Michigan Maths and Science Scholars Program has role in admissions. Girls Who Code, who already mentioned, uh, the Foundation for Teaching Economics, summer programs offer uh, a lot of options. So these are just examples of the programs that, that were I, I found in, uh, in being recommended to students. And also I checked that all the students uh, all these programs, they uh, accept international students. So you need to be really, really careful because you might hear about the program, but they do not, they're only for US citizens. So make sure that uh, the international students are accepted. And once again, there are much more. So you can Google review. If you find the program, you're not sure about uh, whether it is a valid opportunity, whether it has certain accreditation, maybe you have certain concerns, make sure that you get connected with your Education USA advisor and ask about this opportunity An advisor can help. Uh, sometimes we can, uh, if we work with you for a long time, we can give you a certain recommendation or uh, ex explain your financial need, for example, if such uh, support is needed. Another opportunity that was shared with us was uh, our English Language Cultural Immersion Summer Program from Central Washington University. You can see here, uh, they also, they're not free, but they have uh, the fee that, um, uh, like, that is pretty accessible and they still accept in, um, opportunities, uh, uh, applications. Then uh, you can, especially if you're not in high school anymore, if you are a professional, a student, a graduate uh, student, you can look for ELP or ESL programs. ELP stands for English Language Program. ESL is English as a Secondary Language Program. Uh, and uh, you can go to intensiveenglishusa.org and find uh, opportunities there. Uh, you can, there is, for example, as an example, there are uh, ELP programs at Penn. Then you see San Diego, you see uh, on the screenshot, just an example of how many different types of English language programs during summer period can be offered by colleges. Some of them may be concentrated on specific uh, types of English, like English for business or communication and culture uh, or academic English, uh, medical English, legal English, which is great for professionals or graduate level students. Uh, or Columbia uh, SPS has also American language programs. So there are a lot of such uh, opportunities. And another way how you can Google, though uh, you, you can, you, not all colleges have uh, these opportunities, but you can also look for American language and culture programs like University of Idaho or uh, California State University of Monterey Bay. You can see some costs. You can see that uh, California State University of Monterey Bay offers virtual ALSCP, which is $500 in the, uh, Again, you can find some scholarship and free opportunities, uh, but also if you uh, do have certain financial, uh, certain finances to uh, contribute to your future studies, if you contribute now to a summer program, then uh, it might uh, show your interest in a specific school institution. It may uh, let start you may start some contact with the, the university representative maybe it will also help you to get certain uh financial help uh, in the future or be admitted to a college so uh we are going to questions and um 
let's see what we have. So I see that there is some uh, uh, team already applied uh, in a chat, but maybe we can also uh, answer through audio. Uh, is there a website with all summer programs available? Um, no. <laughs> I didn't find. So the problem is that like with universities, uh, if you are looking for universities, there's different sites like um, College Board, right? Provides the opportunity to search for a college or university. But then uh, each such site has certain parameters how you can uh, search for a college, which makes you maybe not see certain options or see not everything. So with summer programs, especially with summer programs that are available for international students, I didn't find such site that would have just summer programs in the US because they also change. There is no database. Some programs are available for both American students and international. So you really have to do all the work through some search in China, like Google or Yahoo. I don't know, team, if you know about such site, but I did not find it. Many years, I did not find <laughs> it. takes uh, the expertise of someone like Elena to really understand what all the choices are out there. Uh, the Education USA office, wherever you are, specializes, though, in, in researching those questions. So when you go to an Education USA office and you start talking about what your goals are, your dreams, and your ideas, they'll start explaining what your options are. They'll start doing the research and showing you your choices. So it can be daunting to, to guess at the right opportunity. Uh, but the Education USA office is specialized in helping you on that. Also, if you have friends or family that have already done a summer program someplace uh, in the United States, you know, you can go to the Education USA office and say, hey, my friend went here, I wanna do this. My, my older brother went here, I wanna do this. And they can help you navigate whatever it takes to get the information you need in order to get into that program. So there's a question about uh, summer uh, 2023 programs. So next summer programs. So first of all, it's not too late for this summer in some cases. So it kind of depends on what you wanna try to accomplish. But the, the application dates for summer 2023 vary depending on the program. And my recommendation is if you're planning for summer sun, summer 2023, now is not too early. You can look at what did it take to get into summer 2022? How much did it cost? What were the dates? Uh, who are the contact people? And you can get all that information from your Education USA office. And then you know, okay, what do I need to do to get my letters of recommendation or my application or my COVID or my uh, uh, Duolingo test or whatever it is that you want to try to accomplish. And you can start doing that and at least know when those dates are now, especially the funding. It's not free. You still got to take an airplane there. Most people can't walk. And so there's going to be some costs. And so you need to start managing what it's going to take to do that cost. There's also some visa requirements. And depending on the lead time for getting a visa, you're gonna to have to pay attention to that. If you do a program at College of the Canyons, typically you can do a B visa, which is a tourist visa. You can also do an F visa, which is a student visa, either one. But some programs require certain types of visas. They may require an F visa, which is a different type of visa than a tourist visa. Most of them will let you do the tourist visa, which is the B visa. But those are these are the things that you wanna plan for in advance and make sure that you have all the things you can do early done early and all the things that, that are on a specific timeline you know exactly when that is so you're never late you don't want to take that dream opportunity that place that you really want to do your summer program at say robotics at mit and miss it by a day because you didn't plan so it's okay to start now and start planning for that 2023 experience yes thank you uh, and uh, I have, since I was collecting some opportunities that you saw in this video, uh, then we can locally uh, have start this list of programs and deadlines. And uh, also, if you are aware, so how do how usually we learn about certain opportunities that are great? Uh, we usually learn from our students who found them and who applied to them, who were selected and who used these opportunities, uh, whether paid or with scholarship. Uh, it is always great to hear from you. So if you're watching this recording and you know about it uh, or you are here live 
with us and you know about certain interests in summer programs just share with us and we'll be uh, able to note that and then share with future generations I don't I see another question but uh, I just want to remind you that we have a few minutes left for this meeting so if you have any other questions make sure that you type them now. So the question we had uh, was about pluses, minuses of short programs and long programs. And uh, Tim, you can repeat your answer as well. Uh, I think yeah, that's very good. good. So there are, there's, there are pluses and minuses to everything in life. Um, the minuses associated with the summer programs is often there is a cost. Um, they're not free. Uh, there's transportation costs. Uh, if you want to go to Disneyland, you have to buy a Disneyland ticket. Those are over $100. Um, you're going to want to buy food. There's costs. So that's really the minus part. That's pretty much the only minus part. All the rest of it is pluses. So one of the big pluses is, of course, you start forming this concept in your mind of what it's going to take to succeed at a U.S. institution. You also, though, have um, great opportunities to meet people that you haven't met before. So you're going to meet local students wherever you go. Uh, you're going to meet the professors at the institution. If you choose to go to that school, you'll meet some of the professors and maybe you'll know them. Um, you'll get to know like the flow of the town you're in. And so there's, there's a lot of different kinds of places in the United States. There's rural areas. They're, they're way out up in the mountains or they're out in the, the farm country. Uh, some people want that. Then there's schools which are located in big cities. So there's tall buildings, a lot of noise all night long, all day long. And a lot of people like that. If you've come from a city that's a big city, that might be great for you. And then there's suburban areas like College of the Canyons, which are specifically the kind of slower paced. You still have access to everything uh, that you would in a big city, but there's usually no tall buildings. People are usually uh, very friendly. There's usually no bias uh, and it's a fun place to be, uh, but it's very different. So those three. summer program, you're going to place whatever place it is that you chose. Then you can decide, wow, I really like that hustle and bustle and 24 hours of the city. Or you may decide, look, I want to I want to go camping and I want to ride my mountain bike. I want to go hiking. I want to go fishing. That's going to be more for me. And so you, you understand what those things are because the pressures and difficulties of the academic world are real. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of work to get a bachelor's degree. You're gonna to wanna to live someplace where when you aren't studying, you are rejuvenating. And so that's a big plus of the summer program is you get to experience one or more of those areas and really decide, is this gonna be for me? Thank you. And yeah, I just wanted to add that uh, the guest team will agree that a lot of American students, for them, going to college is a huge decision and they spend a lot of summer time to go to different campus tours, campus visits, to see, to they also apply to summer schools or short-term programs in summer. So summertime is for them an opportunity, especially in uh, like, uh, not senior year, but in sophomore, junior year. So like their uh, 10th, 11th grades, uh, for them it's an opportunity to learn more about the specific area, the specific campus uh, or college or, or to, choose, to make this decision. So for American students, it is much more accessible, even though the US is a huge country and they can't easily also go anywhere in the US. But for international students, it is not just as easy to go to all uh, options. So uh, choosing a summer program right, uh, or just using this opportunity. Um, if you, for example, have any relatives in the US or you just have an opportunity to go to the US and uh, you can also then take a look, uh, as Tim mentioned, some programs will require you to have B2 visa, B1, B2 visa. Uh, so you don't have to apply for a specific study visa. So if you're just visiting or going on tourism, then uh, you can just also apply to uh, a summer school, maybe the one that is not very competitive, but still will give you this sense of what it means to be a student. 
So yeah, that's a really good point, Elena. The uh, the university visit is a American time honored tradition, and parents will start taking their kids to different campuses so they can see the campus, mostly for the opportunity to try to create it so that their child starts dreaming and focusing and understanding what it's going to be like. Um, in the long run, uh, most of those students don't get into the course and the school that they really picked for their first one. And so they do the two plus two system. So they do two years at their local community college, they stay living at home, and then they transfer and do two more years. They save a lot of money like that. But the most important thing really is that gives them an opportunity to get into that school they really cared about. So if a student from my community, for example, applies to UCLA and Berkeley and doesn't get in as a freshman, that because the acceptance rate is very low, well, then after College of the Canyons, the acceptance rate goes to over 80%. And so now they have a great opportunity to get to that school that they dreamed of. Instead of not going to school, picking a school they didn't really dream of, because it has that motivation has to come from you. So that uh, isn't something that is, is equally available to international students. You have to do more of a virtual tour. All in all, the bottom line is that university degree from the United States is very valuable throughout the world. So don't get too hung up on exactly which school you go to. What really matters is that you complete, you get that bachelor's degree. And I think Elena will agree, the master's degree also very important. And so the reason for that is because more and more people are getting bachelor's degrees. That master's degree is going to help you stand out. And you're there doing it. You're at that school. They have master's degree programs. It's a great opportunity. So don't be too daunted that you have to make the perfect choice. The most important choice is the choice that you make to actually do it. And that's where Education USA office can really help you because if you don't know for sure what you want to do or where you want to go, they can help you look at the mass variety of choices you have in the USA. Thank you, Tim. Yes, uh, very nice point. I think uh, it's a great point to end our today's session. Thank you very much. We've spent a great hour, I think, very informative. The recording will be available, links will be available. Uh, Tim, also feel free to share with me any links you would like or brochures you would like to share with those who registered or who were today present at the live session will share those um, informa this information. And thanks to all who listened, who joined us today. Thank you, Tim, once again for your time and have a great day. Bye, everybody. Bye.